On November 2nd, 1966, Harry Harrison published a science fiction novel called Make Room, Make Room. The novel was about the murder of a racketeer in overpopulated New York City in 1999, 33 years after the book was published. Then, in 1968, Paul R. Ehrlich, a Stanford biologist, along with Anne Howland Ehrlich, published The Population Bomb, which predicted worldwide famine due to overpopulation. Much of the book is spent describing the state of the environment and the food security situation, which is described as increasingly dire. Ehrlich argues that the existing population is not being fed adequately. It was unable to expect sufficient improvements in food production to feed everyone. Therefore, soon hundreds of millions of people would starve to death. The only solution was population control. Despite the notion that his ideas were basically warmed over Malthusian predictions of calamities, by the 1970s the population bomb was on people's minds. In more totalitarian countries such as the People's Republic of China, policies were implemented restricting the size of families. For example, China had a policy from 1979 to 2015 restricting many families to a single child. In more liberal countries, birth control became more prevalent, including in the United States, abortion, at least in the aftermath of Roe v. Wade. In the meantime, Charlton Heston starred in Planet of the Apes, a 1968 science fiction film which describes a post-apocalyptic world in which apes have assumed the role of the dominant species. Uh, then, in 1971, Heston starred in The Omega Man, about a Sino-Soviet war in which biological warfare is unleashed and most of the human race is destroyed. It was produced by Walter Seltzer, who went on to work with Heston again, this time in Soylent Green, released in 1973. In order to qualify as a low-budget review, the price of the DVD must be less than $13.91. This DVD at $9.49 easily qualifies. There was a previous DVD released in 2003 that was priced at $7.66. I got the 2008 DVD release, which was priced slightly higher. Again, I'd be interested to know if anybody got the 2003 DVD release and, and what, if any, features were included in that. Uh, but in any case, I got the 2008 DVD release. New York City, 50 years from today. Nothing runs, nothing works. They gave me a but people are the same, and people will do anything to get what they need. What they need most is Soylent Green. Simonson, board of directors of the Soylent Corporation, murdered because he discovered the secret of Soylent Green. Detective Thorne. He's got to find out what Simonson knew. <laughs> Saul Roth, Thorne's researcher. Courtesy of your next assignment. William R. Simonson, Chelsea Towers West. When how'd you get all these? Cheryl, the furniture. Is that Simonson? Is that a yes nod or a no nod? Yes. Hatcher, police captain. Simonson. Supposed to look like he was killed when he caught some punk burglarizing his apartment. Well, what do you say? It was an assassination. Tab Fielding, bodyguard. Why would you leave that door open? <laughs> 
Why did you set up Simonson? Charlton Heston, Edward G. Robinson, Lee Taylor Young, Chuck Connors. Fight for survival and solve the most bizarre riddle ever to face mankind. This is the police. I'm asking you to disperse. The supply of Soylent Green has been exhausted. Why does Soylent Green mean life? You must disperse. The scoops are on their way. Why does Soylent Green mean death? Soylent Green is a pretty good science fiction movie, not because it was pressing it's about the future of the world, which for the most part it got wrong, and in fact I'm going to be uh, doing a video about um, the aspects that Soylent Green got wrong probably within the next week or so. Um, it doesn't really project a futuristic view of the world, and in fact was produced by MGM on an old school MGM sets, perhaps one of the last movies to be in such a way. In fact, in the 1974, uh, the old MGM sets were demolished. Um, so basically, it's a, it's a movie produced in 1973 that looks like a movie that was produced in 1973. Um, basically, it's a 1970s movie that's good because it projects forward a fear of the future of the planet based on concerns both uh, legitimate and illegitimate could easily make a short list of some of these concerns. For example, overpopulation, pollution, income inequality, authoritarianism, global warming. Soylent Green addresses all of these concerns, and although the movie doesn't really have a happy ending, we can say the ending is bittersweet, and Thorne is ultimately the hero we didn't know we wanted, pursuing the secret of Soylent Green no matter the cost. Uh, one of the negative aspects of this movie is this portrayal of women. Here, the women are depicted as furniture, therefore the sexual pleasure of powerful men, with the exception of the exchange leader, played by a geriatric Seal Lovsky. Uh, obviously, the feminist movement was unsuccessful in the future. few words should be said about the politics of Soil and Green. As one person commenting on the movie on IMDb, and IMDb stands for Internet Movie Database, a popular site for movie reviews, uh, Soil and Green is hardly a diatribe for unfettered capitalism. On the other hand, it seems like the society depicted in the movie, as suggested in one of the IMDb reviews of this movie, is a blueprint for today's UN Agenda 2030. If I search for UN Agenda 2030 in a popular browser, I see this as a summary of Agenda 2030. Um, the, the 2030 Agenda is universal, transformative, and rights-based. It is an ambitious plan of actions for countries, the UN system, and all other actors. The Agenda is the most comprehensive blueprint to date for eliminating extreme poverty, reducing inequality, and protecting the planet. If I search for uh, UN Agenda 2030 on Yandex, however, and Yandex, uh, FYI, is, is a Russian search engine, we start to see UN Agenda 2030 as a template for a socialist dystopia uh, with welfare dependence, a cashless society, and overbearing government. Uh, responsible consumption and production becomes forced aust austerity. As for the environment, well, just look at the environmental track record of the Soviet Union. Uh, so it seems like life in Soylent Green is the life that the World Economic Forum elites want to shove down everyone's throats. Everyone should be living in pog pods and eating bugs, while the elites live in mansions and get to eat T-bone steaks. It may be permissible for the peasants to eat hamburgers once a month, but that's pretty much it. Um, so is a, is a society depicted in Soylent Green the result of unchecked capitalism or a socialist nightmare? Or maybe it's the result of a mixed economy? Because, I mean, uh, 
few economies that are pure capitalism or pure socialism uh, we seem to be living in a mixed economy and and uh, so you know this may be the, the result of what happens when the, 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 uh, when you have a mixed economy um, well I leave this for the individual to judge um, also something that should be said about the stellar acting we get a good performance from Charlton Heston who plays the alpha male, which is good because that's what the role requires. And we should also praise the acting of Edward G. Robinson as Saul Roth. It's also somewhat poignant because he was dying of bladder cancer during the production of this movie, and he died only nine days after he completed filming. Um, while I agree that Gene Siskel that the scenes with the giant shovel scoop designed to quash rioters was comical, I also agree with Roger Ebert that this movie was a solid science fiction movie. I therefore give it a 7 out of 10. Soylent Green is a solid science fiction movie and is full of DVD extras that will not necessarily fulfill your appetite for Soylent Green but nonetheless gives you some extras. Uh, and the DVD is cheap, uh, sold for less than $10, namely uh, $9.49. You can also get the 2003 DVD for slightly less than this this uh, DVD. It would be interesting to know if the 2003 DVD has all the extras that the 2008 DVD did, or if not, which ones were included. In any case, I would recommend this DVD. Well, that's it for this video. Like and comment on this video, and subscribe so that you're informed about the latest low-budget review. As always, thank you for watching.